It's time to unravel the hidden mysteries of the universe. Time to uncover the truth hidden beneath the veil of lies. Time to transport your mind from the perverted matrix and connect with your higher consciousness into the world of the divine paradigm. The divine paradigm. Divine paradigm. Divine paradigm. Divine paradigm. Divine paradigm. And now your hosts of the divine paradigm, Dr. Sasha Lesson and Janet Kira Lesson. Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to Divine Paradigm on KCOR Radio at kcorradio.com. And I am your host, Janet Kira Lesson, with my incredible co host, Dr. Sasha Alex Lesson. And today we have a very exciting, super exciting show with William White Crow. And William has been, for over 50 years, has been researching the planet and society as a whole and how they interact together on a global basis. He's also an avid researcher of paranormal and UFO activity across the planet. He's a business owner, writer, radio show host, and international radio personality that has brought to light many of the situations that are affecting our planet and mankind at the present time. He's a shaman and seer of future events which has been documented by many, including the 911 event, the collapse of the St. Louis Bridge, the Mount St. Helen eruption, and the Fukushima situation where we are seeing unfold right now across the Pacific Basin. He has a deep understanding and connection, not only with the planet, but with people as well. He's a Vietnam veteran and understands the realities of war and peace. He's also been involved with several secret limited access programs, which he has only recently agreed to talk about. He sees what's really happening in the world around us as far as the Earth and humanity as a whole are concerned. His recent book titled, Are You Tired of Living a Toxic Life? is now available on Amazon.com, and it deals with personal choices and change, which is much needed in our world of today. His mission is to wake up people to the reality of our situation as a species here on our one and only home planet, Earth, and what we can do about it. He has predicted two futures for mankind, and both of them depend on the decisions we make now. He has a favorite saying, I'm a highly developed spiritual person, but I'm a realist as well. I live in this world too. His mission is to help people understand that there are some things that we can't change, but there's a lot more that we can change. Humanity needs to understand that we are in a pivotal point in human history, and we have the ability to choose whether we are going to become part of the sixth great extinction, which is taking place right now, or advance to a higher level of humanity as a species spiritually, intellectually, and technologically. It's all up to us. And his web- website is williamwhitecrow.com, and I invite you to go over there and look through that. Dr. Liss, come closer to the mic, and what would you like to say? Well, of course, like everybody else, I'd like to, to know what you see in the, in, in the uh, future, whether you're getting any clear visions uh, of... Um, future events that those are always uh, fun but i i gotta say you know it's like uh, i'm one of the people that's interviewed uh, andy Pashago extensively and i could feel the total truth about his testimony and what he's sharing and i've watched people stand forth uh, and witness him and have the courage in, uh, and you've just done that too to really say yes there uh, we have been uh, on Mars and the Moon, and here's what we've been doing. And I hung out uh, when I went to the Mars conference with a bunch of people that spent their days looking at um, pictures that NASA released of uh, the Moon and Mars, and trying to take off the uh, white off or whatever it is. And uh, they, we were looking at these on the. Uh, screen and then William you came through and and you your pictures oh yes that's a this and that's a that no yeah and I walked by this and I walked by that so you are the witness to Andy Bashago's telling the truth the truth that we all have to know and and when I started listening to you I realized wow and you've got your truth too and a hell of a lot of wisdom so I'm really looking forward to what you got to say bro and thank you, William White Crow, for coming on our show today. Uh, I know there's a lot of directions we could take this show, but I'd like you to start and tell us uh, what you want people to know about yourself and your work. And, um, you know, for the first section here, you, you take us on a journey and then we'll direct it to the second and third. Take it away. Oh, okay. You bet. 
Thank you. Well, thank for number one. Thank you for having me on your show. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. And I'm glad you guys made it to the Mars conference and everything. You know, and, uh, what Andy has to say is very important for humanity and mankind. You know, he's not somebody that's just been out there doing this all his life to uh, to create a comic book or anything. This is reality to him. And he, I'm going to be honest with you. He searched for me for about 30 years or a little more before he found me uh, because it's very hard to find me. Uh, I made sure of that, you know, because of the life I've lived and everything. And when Andy came into my house, uh, he turned around and he had mentioned some situations and some people's names. And my wife got tears in her eyes because she thought that I was going to go back in and uh, back in the programs and stuff. So that's how it affected us here, you know, and I had to calm her down. It's okay, dear, you know, all's well. I'll just tell, you know, what, what Andy what Andy needs here, you know, to back him up and, and let people know that he's, he is telling the truth. I trained the man. You know, so I know he's telling the truth. As for me and yeah. my purpose here, and the, re the reason I became a shaman is because of going through all these programs and my experiences in life and understanding where mankind is now and where he is heading. And uh, the things that I've seen in the future, depending on what man's uh, modes are and the changes we make now, we're in a very precarious situation right now as human beings. And I don't care what anybody else says out there. It's, it's a stone cold fact. You can step out your front door and look at it and see it, you know, mm -hmm. and I've been gathering information about our society. I've been gathering information about our, our planet and putting it all together. And a lot of people only want to look at, you know, the global weather change or, or a political this or that, you know, and everybody likes to argue with one another because we've been taught to be separated. We haven't been taught to come together as a species together and stop the warring and everything and work for a common good. And right now, that is a very important thing for us to do is all of us work towards a common goal. The systems that are in place now are inappropriate. They're not working. We have to evolve to a higher plane of existence, a higher plane of thinking, because we've been kept in these loops for generations. And I think you guys know as well as I do that after one or two generations after something has gone by, nobody remembers anything from that point before. You know, right. we have youngsters right now in their 20s, you know, in the 18s and stuff that have no idea what the 70s and 60s and 50s, you know, and things of this were, were like at all. You know, like when we had the oil shortage and things like that, and people waiting in line were getting ready to do that again at, to a point. Uh, it, there, there's other aspects that are going on here that we can get into later. But my main thing is, is really try to help humanity understand exactly where we're at right now, environmentally, planetary-wise, socially. Uh, politically and everything, uh, get the big picture out there going so everybody can kind of wake up, shake their head, you know, throw some cold water on their face and say, OK, now I know where we're at. Uh, so our future generations will have a chance because uh, we have to change. We really, really do have to change. There's a lot at stake here for humanity. And like I said, and you read it right there, we can either become part of the sixth grade extinction or we can take the steps to move into a brighter future. Right on, and that, that's what uh, I keep bringing home. I, I, I'm a very uh, psychic person. I'm a, a lifelong experiencer, and I have seen the future in many various ways. Uh, you mentioned that you see the future, and you see two major timelines, or, or um, what do you call it? multiverses. How do you how do you access the future? Are you using technology? Are you using your own shamanic psychic abilities, or a combination of things? Well. The, the first thing that it, that it always comes with is my own shamanic abilities, you know, the things that we all have naturally within us that we pay little attention to. You know, that those two little voices, one sits on one shoulder and the other sits on the other, yes, no, yes, no. You know, you're always fighting one another. Uh, <laughs> uh, with me, everything started out with me visions. Uh, when I was very, very, very young, I and they kind of scared me, you know, because I didn't know what they were until the elders started telling me, this, you're not seeing things now and you have to understand these are things in the future. You know, uh, and the second way was when I was working within the uh, organizations, the projects, shall we say, and uh, I experienced the actual aspects of time travel, the teleportation, things of this myself. And through Andy and I had seen two different timelines. And that's when I turned around and I kind of jumped for joy when I heard that, you know, uh, for, especially coming from him, you know, because mm -hmm. uh, part of what I what we did, we had to jump to multiple timelines to see what was going on, variations. And that's part of the reason we're kind of having Mandela effects right now, actually, is because of what we mm -hmm. consider ripples in time. 
Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm very uh, familiar with the Mandela effect. I was shown 24 multiple potential timelines when I was four years old in physical form. But once I was on board ship, I was in my immortal self form. And uh, mm-hmm. these are the these were the most likely possibilities of where humanity would go based on you know what was happening in 1958. So I'm aware of that, and, and it's very easy to, to um, you know simultaneously hold timelines and and slip back and forth between them. So that's how I time yeah. travel, but I'm not sure how I do it. But I just do it, and it's part of uh, probably who I who I am as a as a physical being, which is a hybrid with many um, a lot of um, yeah. kind of like on a tall white type uh, uh, genetics within my physical form and then who I am as a soul and I have access to who I am mm-hmm. as an immortal being so I'm aware of that yet I'm totally human just like everybody else so yeah. with that in mind what are the two pivotal uh, timelines that you and Andy have identified and can you describe them a little bit for our listeners well, uh, Andy had, uh, you know, he was uh, delivering information and things of this nature to uh, particular individuals and and uh, in his timeline and everything, and I, one of the timelines that I went on with scientists and everything, I seen a future year 2045, and everything. It didn't look too good planetary wise at all. And now, uh, now society and people were were okay. We had a, a population was dropping, uh, things of this nature. You know, everybody knows by the year two, they say by 2050 we're going to have nine billion, nine point six billion people, whereas seven point six billion people right now. You know what I mean? And uh, we live in. A, an enclosed system, and this is one of the things that when I was working with the scientists that they really helped me understand. You know, uh, the actual words of one of the scientists. You know, when I would say, "Oh, you know, they got a lot of trees over here, and this and that in our planet." I don't see. You know, we plant more trees, and he goes, "Not, not now." He goes, "Now you would have to plant the entire United States in trees just to make a ten percent difference in the CO two and stuff in the air." Wow. And I was like, "Whoa," you know, and. Uh, he said, so, but this is what we're going to do. We have, do. We do have these multiple timelines. We have to check them out. So the first thing that you have to do is go in and reconnoiter an area where these scientists are going to be. And I've seen the whole entire Southwest is dry and barren. Not saying that they wouldn't have rainstorms, but when you do have rainstorms and stuff like that, water washes off fast so the water isn't held in the ground. It'll go in the river and go somewhere else real fast. So, so that's what we're seeing in a lot of places. I see in the northeastern area a lot of rain, a lot of snow, a lot of things like this. I see deserted uh, uh, cities and things like this uh, in certain areas of the southwest. We're starting to see more of that. Mega water problems, uh, mega food shortages, uh, things of this nature. And uh, the big thing that I've seen also that scientists were talking about was transportation of the food sources and, and natural resources are going to be disrupted. You know, And I didn't quite understand that in the beginning and but now, now i do because of environmental so factors see, polit- political factors wait, wait, let me understand it. you're saying that you don't the, the only food you'll be able to get is what you grow near you or something i didn't quite understand that last part yeah, transportation and food are yes. disrupted yeah yeah tell yes. us a little bit more yes about that. well basically how, because how many- of, basically what i've seen was uh, there were, because of droughts because of political unrest. I've seen a, a great division within our country as well. I, I've actually seen the United States broken up into five different pieces, you know, uh, where there was civil unrest and everything in the f- future, uh, things of that nature. I did also see us in a conflict, a major conflict, where uh, several countries were involved and there were nuclear weapons involved, which I don't wow. like to see that because I don't even really, I don't even like to talk about that kind of stuff. You know, I, I try to look better toward the future. But as I said before, there's some things in time you can't stop. You can only, shall we say, slow them down for a period of time. And, uh, you know, they're, they're going to happen. Everything isn't set in stone, per se, as a lot of people think. And uh, now, of course, with the Mandela effect and, and, and the ripples in time and things, things are changing as well. So it's kind of really fluid right now. But I do see uh, food shortages. I, I do know for a fact there's going to be water shortages. Uh, I know them just as well as I know my own name, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, these are the things that I've seen. I did see the poor, a massive amount of poor people. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, cities, the law enforcement, everybody moving towards cities and incident and letting the rural areas kind of go and stuff. We're, we're starting to see this all over the United States now, you know. And mm-hmm. I also seen the United States al- alone for a period of time where none of the uh, its allies and everything were really helping out much. It was like a kind of, you know, our political people put ourselves in kind of a bad situation. 
it, got, it gets straightened out over time. But um, we got some hard times ahead of us uh, economically, right. food wise, and things of this nature. So uh, let's call that timeline A. Now, is that the timeline where there's nine and a half billion people? Yeah, yeah. No, well, see, that, that's what they're projected. By 2050, we're supposed to have about 9.6 billion people. Now, one of the right. things that the scientists told me about was we live in an enclosed system. And that's what I was going to touch on. Uh, we live in an enclosed system. Our, pla our planet cannot run down to the local drugstore and get a new atmosphere, get a new ocean, get, you know, uh, a little more ozone for its, uh, you know, the good ozone layer and things of this nature. It is an enclosed system. Therefore, its resources are not forever. Once you use up what you have in an enclosed system, then you're going to start having problems. You have to leave the planet to go find other other sources of, of, of resources and stuff. And that's part of the reason we're seeing NASA really trying to find other habitable planets. They're looking at Mars again and, and doing all kinds of things right now. And uh, keeping the social unrest and the fear uh, thing going so we uh, really don't get together and work together and do what we need to do. That's what I see. So that is an agenda. I'll let you do the next question. But is that a, a political agenda that somebody, the powers that be, are intentionally um, you know, creating so that we basically abandon abandon planet earth and colonize um you know mars and beyond but you know we don't have the lotto ticket for that so basically it's it seems like what we're seeing with the proposal that they just want to kill us off and that's what george green and other people talked about the um mm. the uh what do you call it? Yeah, population and so i'm wondering like if george the population agenda gets kicked in before we reach that 9.6 billion we're happening based on and we're doing that. Yeah. we're doing that right yeah. we're doing that right now and that's how <laughs> come we're so close right now uh if we were with another president right now we'd already be in the conflict because this other individual that wanted to be president of course i'm not going to mention any names uh <laughs> <laughs> but uh we uh actually heard this one particular individual saying it's time for the mass coin and this was in the 70s when i heard this uh, late 70s right. wow. it's t it's time for the mass coin and to time to get rid of the useless eaters. Now this is wow. the presidency, you know. I mean, so when you hear things like this, you go, "What's going on?" And then you start putting all the pieces together, and you realize they're going to put us in another war. There has to be a massive population drop as far as they want, and it doesn't matter what the president wants or, or anything because the president we have what uh, 17 level security than he is, so he's on need to know basis only. You know, and, and that's unfortunate in many ways for a lot of presidents, but that's the way it is. Our countries and things are not run by presidents, it's run by the power brokers. And the power brokers right. are very, very uh, powerful. That's why we need people like Andy and other people like you guys out there telling the truth of what's going on and what we can do about it. Because uh, we're in, in for some very interesting times right here uh, in, in big ways and people better be prepared for it. Spiritually, now this is the key thing. You can be prepared spiritually and physically. Like I said in, in my thing, I'm a highly spiritual person, but I'm a realist. I know what me and my family are going to go through, and you and your families are going to go through here in the not-too-distant future. So it would behoove us all to start paying a little bit of attention and getting our things ready. Uh, the, the areas that are going to be growing zones are going to go up higher because our planet's tilted more. There are just so many. I, I can see the whole picture, and there are just so many little, little facets here that uh, people are not paying attention to. But that's, again, that's why we have these radio shows, so we can get the information out there. Okay, Sasha has a question. Oh, it's just, uh, if I could summarize or under, really understand one of the profound things that you were talking about is that the inevitable outcome of an extractive um, economy uh, that doesn't balance things out by adding stuff means that it, you exhaust the planet uh, yes. ultimately and, and ruin it. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. And that's how Thank come we you. have that's, a, that's how come we have a breakaway civilization out there right now and the secret space program and everything going on. They're preparing to leave. They're not worried about right. me or you or anything else. They have certain people and, and like you I like what you said, we don't have the lottery ticket. You know? Right. So we're not we're not gonna be on the on those craft and in those programs out there you know we know some of us know our genetics are going to continue on that's just the way the programs work you know if you've been in the programs your genetics are you can bank on it they're somewhere oh i've been you know if I've they're been not, in yeah i'm sorry i, I, I didn't I, hear I, you 
I won that lotto. I've been in their programs. I won that, that lotto. I'm definitely in their programs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, me, yeah. me too. I want that one too. You know, but the thing about it is uh, a lot of uh, family members and other people out there in humanity aren't. Now, the fact of the matter is, and this is the reality of the situation, no matter if we had the spaceships and everything, not everybody's going to make it. It's just the way nature and things are in reality. But what we can do as a species is take ourselves up to the the next level. We're a class zero civilization right now, but we are a stone's throw away from being a class one civilization. The only thing well, stopping us is our... Yeah, so what's plan B? What's what's that one like? Oh, wait, well, before we go to plan B, I have a couple more questions <laughs> okay. on plan A. Okay. Um, sure. Because I want to know a little bit more about you and your involvement and what, what you've seen and heard and, and understand. Because I have my understanding and I interviewed thousands or no, I may be exaggerated, hundreds of experiencers and we have uh, we're, we're co collaborating our stories and there there are common common themes uh like mm -hmm. tolik and i both have seen have been shown the 24 multiverses 12 of which were kind of negative and 12 which were positive all the way up to total utopia and uh you know to the other end of a total apocalypse with the planet blowing up so we've seen these different uh, paradigms possibilities so so to me from my understanding that nothing set in stone even we ourselves individually and collectively as the observer participant we're not locked into a timeline we are the That's chooser right. we can decide where we're going to go so uh, so we have these two main timelines that you and andy have seen or been shown or or are within the programs that our, our government i guess these are some kind of military programs that, that he was involved with, with um that uh, you know many of the uh, experiencers are although mine i think are outside of this um, box a little bit. Uh, they're showing me the, yeah, the potential too. perturbation. The perturbation. So what mm -hmm. type of beings, entities have you interacted? What is your understanding of the um, the, the politics going up to the highest level, uh, you know, beyond the, the um, you know, the Republicans and the Democrats and the Brits and everybody on, on the European level and in China? There's, there's somebody above that. Who is the all oh, yeah, Who is the you're master. talking well the the name shall we say you know you're not going to get a single name but you will get that upper one percent you know to two percent of individuals uh that do know what is going on and how things are operating and there it's all interagency all, all multiple uh country assets everything all pulled together kind of like a backdoor policy uh and when i was in the programs and dealing with them and and, and stuff that i had dealt with i had dealt with four different you know non-terrestrial beings even though they're here terrestrial now they've been here long longer than we have you know but the, the politics that are going on behind the scenes right now and i just talked to somebody just last week and everything are everybody is in the get ready mode for for throwing everything into high gear you know and that's what we really are seeing out there right now everything is going into a high gear the controlling mode that's how come the trump thing and all these other uh uh, people around the planet are worried about the environment because so are these other beings. You know, we have right. to understand that this planet isn't just ours. You know, this planet doesn't belong to just us. We're stupid enough to think that. Arrogant, I guess, right. would be the word to use. That's it. That's you know? it. Mm -hmm. we're, we're so arrogant to think that we are the smartest, we're the best, and we know what's good and we know what isn't good. But yet, we've seen the president that, <laughs> that the White House, even in the 50s and 60s, zoomed by UFO crap, and nobody wants to admit it. You know, the United States right. is scared right now. A lot of the people in power are afraid right now because these other beings are starting to come out and deal with the regular people because they know that dealing with the governments isn't going to do any good. The negative aspects of our, shall we say, the others or visitors are. They're the ones that's creating the chaos in the world right now and the things of this nature, because that's what they, they do. They control it, and they've done it since the Anunnaki time. You know, in the ancient Sumerians, right. they set up systems the way things they wanted them to be. Well, those systems don't work, and they're falling apart right now because of their control systems. There's another system coming in to be right now, which I am very, very glad to see and everything for, with these beings and everything coming to say, listen, uh, you're at the apex right now of your own civilized world. And they've contacted you people, me, and many, many people out there. And they're showing themselves and letting us know. So proving that we're not going to 
to get disclosure the way we want it from the government. So the disclosure is now coming straight to the people. And that's what I see. Well, we're coming up on our first break, but before we get there, I just want to know what are the four species that you've interacted with? My the particular ones that I've been interested with, two of the grays, I've seen the Nordics, as they call the whites, whatever, and uh, and dealt with them, and also the mantis, uh, the mantids, I should say. It's kind of like the ultimate of uh, mental and under, <laughs> of understanding, period. Uh, so those are the ones that I've dealt with. There, there's another fifth group out there and everything, but you, believe it or not, we're having a turf war out there right now, you know, within our solar system and things of that nature. So we have to kind of really be aware of what's going on because the negative aspects of these beings also are trying to deal with this. Have you dealt with the reptilians at all? Yes, I have. Mm -hmm. okay, and so uh, there's a different factions. That's the fifth group that I was uh, talking about. Okay. Uh, we have like uh, two minutes to break. So uh, when we come back after this break, we're going to focus on a little bit more about what we just said this first half hour. What did you want to say, Sasha? Oh, I, just, I, I would really want to like to know about uh, the Pegasus and, uh, and, the, and the Mars jump program and what's on the moon and what's on Mars. And if you would shoot us some of or let us use some of your pictures, because the stuff that I saw in your presentation when I was in Alabama was the best uh, photos uh, the clearest I've seen of the surfaces, and so I'm really excited about what you, what you showed us there. If it's up on your website, we'd like to be able to show. Yeah, it. We'll, we'll find that link. And also, we have to deal with timeline B. So I don't know if we've exhausted timeline oh, A, no. yeah. but we got to go pick up timeline B. Uh, okay, we uh, are almost to the music here. Here we are, and you have been listening to Divine Paradigm on KCOR. We'll be back after this six-minute break. are in the divine paradigm with Dr. Sasha Lesson and Janet Kira Lesson exclusively on the KCOR Digital Radio Network. Some call it the height of human civilization. Share your thoughts by calling the KCOR Digital Radio Network hotline number at 702-425-9230. That's 702-425-9230. 9230. Worldwide colors use Skype name KCOR Radio. More positive potential revealed in the exploration of the paranormal after this. This is KCOR Las Vegas, home of the Digital Radio Network. Broadcasting from a shack just south of Area 51. Wait, that doesn't exist. This is the KCOR Digital Radio Network. Now for the news. It's time, once again, to unravel the mysteries of the universe by connecting the dots of the higher consciousness. You get to really sort of enjoy a bizarre ride. Become part of the show by calling the KCOR Digital Radio Network hotline number at 702-425-9230. That's 702-425-9230. Worldwide colors use Skype name KCOR Radio. Tweet your thoughts anytime by using hashtag KCOR. It's my favorite thing to do every day. Escape the Matrix and join the conversation live in our chat room at www.kcorradio.com. Now, back to Divine Paradigm with your enlightened hosts. Dr. Sasha Lesson and Janet Kira Lesson. And yes, we are back, Janet, Sasha, and William White Crow. What do you want to say before we bring back William? Okay, well, just before the break, we were talking about uh, how, uh, William, you saw that humanity had uh, two timelines uh, that were, um, we uh, were at a place to choose. Uh, and uh, we were looking at uh, the timeline that was, is um, very painful and uh, and a downer. That was that's one possibility. I don't know if we exhausted what that one was like. And then we we're going to then look at 
um, what the going down a positive uh, ascension timeline would do. And of course, I'm an existentialist, so I say, can't we embrace uh, both in some way? Or maybe both are going to happen. Maybe different people will go different ways or uh, whatever lessons we need in our karmic development will be there for us, whichever path we take. Anyway, I really want to hear the rest of plan A, if there's any more, and what plan B is like. Yeah, I like what you said there, and because that's exactly how it's going to be. You know, a little bit of this and a little bit of that, you know. Uh, mankind, ourselves, each as an individual, is making I do this every day. I walk out on my front porch and I look up and go, what are we doing? You know, I, I can't do this anymore. We, we have to get the truth out to what's going on. we got to help people understand there's there's something past the destruction, something past the mm -hmm. anger, the hate, the, the fighting of religions and race and everything of this nature and and more and more people are getting on that getting on that train which is good because now people are starting to, to look at the way things have been and understand the control factors of what's going on and say well we can make a difference in our lives like me i'm totally off the grid 100 percent. literally my friends out there i'm not part of your matrix i don't even exist in that i see good things <laughs> happening out there and bad things happening and i have to just accept that and I know we're going to have bad environmental this is an environmental that, but that's not going to change, you know, man's heart. Man is going to change his heart and look and strive for the betterment, spiritually, economically, and every way around. I've seen this, you know, this is a really good thing. This is that other plan, you know, not the bad plan, the good plan. Because certain parts of society and humanity are waking up, and as the Hopi said, you know, there's going to be a split. There's going to be those that are going to follow the old ways, you know, and, and, and the money and the greed and everything. And they're, going to go by the wayside and then there are those who are going to follow the enlightened path now just because you use the word enlightened path doesn't mean that oh it's all fairies and everything's going to be okay no 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 what that means is we come to the realization of a, of a reality that we have to change yeah. our hearts and our minds and our directions that's what that means so I, I really like what you said there you know when you said or is it going to be a mixture of both because that's exactly what it's going to be and that's a good thing yeah, uh, part of the, uh, the how bad it is or the adversity that we see uh, is the challenge. Uh, uh, so when you yes. see uh, uh, unfairness, then your cause becomes justice. Uh, when you see ugliness, beauty becomes your path. And so it's uh, that I think the purpose of the irritants is to uh, activate us. Uh, to give us an opportunity to transcend our uh, boundaries and be more inclusive. Basically, empathy and love is where it's it's all at. And I guess I want to know if you have any specific kinds of, uh, have you met charismatic uh, persons like Jesus that are around to help us through the transition? Has, have you met anyone like that? Yes, I have. I've met uh, two individuals, and uh, both of them, one was a hybrid. We're all hybrids. That's a, that's one thing I like to get out right now off the top. It doesn't matter how what anybody wants to think out there. From the very beginning to this point right now, we're all hybrids, you know. And, and it's uh, really important for everybody to understand that because once you understand that, it frees you from the dogma and all the other crap that people are trying to throw in your brain to, to stop our development. Uh, I was told by these beings and everything, uh, right straight up off the top, Humanity is going to go through a very hard time, but we have to go through this hard time in order to take the step, next step up in classification of who and what we are as a species. And we're seeing that out there right now. And they are there to help us, but we're not going to be helped until the human humanity in mass starts to make the move into the directions they need to instead of following the presidents and all these people and their political agendas. And you can see how they keep everybody in a loop generationally. But we're starting to break free from that, which is a good thing. So, you know, that, that's how come I, I have hope for mankind. Because I know that we're going to go through some hard times, but you have to go through hard times to grow. Without going through hard times, there is no growth. Without conflict, mm -hmm. you cannot move forward. And that's where mm -hmm. humanity is at right now. And that's the that other timeline. I, we do have a very good timeline that Andrew and I have both seen and everything. But we're going to have to crawl through some dirt and go through some crap to get there, you know, because we do have to change our ways of thinking and ways of being. The key that they told me, uh, this is a very important key here, is we have to let it all go, clear our minds, and, and start anew as a new species. And uh, you see a large portion of society want, 
wanting to do that right now. They just don't know how to do it because of all the smoke and mirrors that are going on right now. But it's coming, mm -hmm. and, it, and, it's, and it's happening. Very interesting. I was shown the 24 timelines, and they said, which one do I choose? So I chose the third one from Utopia because Utopia was too boring. There wasn't enough catalyst to, to uh, motivate people <laughs> to do things. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, I, I, you know, I, let's see, let's get back to the, the species. It's great what you guys have been saying, and I really appreciate that. And I, I don't think it's set in stone. And I, I know a lot of people, you know, say we have to go through these hard times and this net, but I think that's a choice that, that and I'm, I'm going to play that one out in my own mind and with the people I talk to is that uh, we call it the apocalypse and my girlfriend even wrote a song called apocalypse it's like and that's what the agenda has been uh, pushed in our faces since the, the beginning of uh, modern time with the story from revelations and, and Jesus and all this apocalypse stuff and Armageddon and, right. and the, the apocalypse right. so I don't that's set in stone. I know everybody has good hearts and, and well intentioned, and we need to prepare, prepare, and yada yada yada. And there's all these survivalist groups, and even Revolution Radio, and all these other things that are going on. However, uh, I work with the the good, the light side of the force, the good ETs, and uh, they're saying, you know, we can stop this today. We can stop this tomorrow. We can stop this at any time. Part of it is mm -hmm. our individual choice mm -hmm. of getting onto the high spiritual path. It's a law of attraction right. and action, and we are co-creating this all. So, uh, and then we were just talking to Chris Hardy. Um, I recommend go back and listen to her interview. We're talking about you know getting into this meditative state, which shifts us automatically higher and higher every day. The more we engage in this meditation, where we allow the uh, higher consciousness to communicate with us. We're always putting stuff out and we're always interfering with our own uh, downloads from, you know, listening to the matrix and all the bullshit that's out there. So right. anyway, with yeah. that being said, I'd like to get back to some ABCs of your experiences. And I'm very curious about the, the beings you've interacted with on what basis was that? Uh, was that as a contact the experiencer or was that in your um I want to call it military service, but it's more than that. See, the breakaway secret space program type service. Please take this. Tell us what you want to tell us. Well, basically, my experience is with the others, and that's what we call the visitors. That's what I've always used that term. It's just a lot easier for people to understand. It's been going on since before the military. When I was five years old, I started having experiences. I went and lived with my dad near March Air Force Base. The next thing I knew, there was things looking in the window at me and everything, and they were good. The tall graves and scared me to death at first, but then over a period of time, I understand that there was nothing to be afraid of, you know, with the individuals that I was dealing with. Now, I'll give you a quick example here of, of my experiences, and there's there's been ongoing experiences all my life, and, uh -huh. and it, it's always keeping me in check, okay? I had military experiences where I've seen them and interacted with them and stuff of this nature, but my own personal experiences on what's going on in the world, what's going on with me, uh, all the, the things that I've been able to see in the future and predict and everything, really comes from experiences with these beings without any military interdiction or any interference whatsoever. And, mm -hmm. and I think that's a big difference between me and a lot of people that were in the programs. I was chosen to be in the programs because of my connection uh, with the others already. You know, they want, I can feel them when they're coming, and I'll give you a good example of that. Uh, one night I was here on my property in my house here, and, and I felt him coming again, you know. And I knew there was nothing to fear, but I, I wanted to show people something. So I <laughs> I put hasp on all my doors on the inside of my house, okay. And I locked them uh -huh. when everybody went to bed with paddle locks. And I put the keys under the bed, in between the mattresses, me and my wife. I, got, I destroyed all the keys except for one key. And I put that under the bed in between, you know, me and my wife, under the in between the mattresses and everything, we went to bed. Well, I put my camera next to my bed and everything. At about 2.30 in the morning, I woke up, I mean, out of a dead sleep. You know, I wasn't really asleep, but, it, you know, I felt that they were there. So I jumped up and ran down my hallway, and I'll be darned. Here's my side door to my house, wide open, the house wide open, everything there, just flopping in the breeze, no lock, no anything. The door to my daughter's room is standing wide open. She's sound asleep. I jumped out of the house and out of my, you know, off my porch and everything with my camera and just started taking pictures up and around in whatever direction I could. 
and I got pictures of orbs of a dissipating uh, being also on the other side of my house like it made it around the fence and was dissipating just as I came in and took pictures of it so this is the type of interaction that I've had all my life I've also had an individual that I've only seen twice in my lifetime that never ages and uh, it's an individual that I get information from every once in a while but uh, the fact of the matter is all my information doesn't come from the military or anything like that most of it comes from these beings that are telling me what's going on and they're also the other ones that told me there's going to be a great distraction during this time to take pull people away from the truth what's going on and i think it has a lot to do with, with you know the other people in this movement that are trying to um stop, stop the truth from coming out basically in many ways it's almost like a, a, a Gaia and gang are part of the distractor. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to say that. You know, uh, I don't I like don't to, you know, to, point. Uh, without Go more ahead. evidence, I know this is like gossip and rumor and speculation. Yeah, I don't. I'm know. just summarizing where I'm Yeah, I don't name names at right this point. Where I'm Go at ahead. with this right now, is I'm just seeing the people that are out there that are. Uh, really trying to condemn other people for their experiences and then it hasn't happened to me and even if they tried it I wouldn't care. I really don't care. I've had my experiences. I know what they are and they're a hundred percent real and there's no false memories or anything because not only has it happened to me it's happened to my family. This is a generational thing. Mm -hmm. It just isn't something that right. one person sees and it's over with you know and my spiritual experiences and my, and my depth of understanding spirituality, what it is, and my development, the things that I went through in my lifetime, with these beings, watching the earth, every single thing they've told me so far has come true. So do I doubt when they come and give me information? No. I believe them before I believe most people on this planet right now, because number one, these beings have never, ever, ever lied to me. They're 100% truthful of what's going on, and there's no fighting amongst them to get one belief system or another out. You know, we're all in this boat together, as they say. Uh, the big situation is our mentality. Are we going to let ourselves as individuals rise up high enough to float above all this crap and BS that's going on? Or are we going to get involved with it? And I like what you said there. You're not going to make any judgments until, you know, all the facts are on the table. And that's the way I am, too. But I have noticed that it's right. seen that there is a particular area that uh, I almost want to say disinformation to a point. You know, and mm -hmm. uh, condemning others, and, and that's not good. We should all be working together to find out the truth. Just like this uh, mummy you were talking about. What the heck with PayPal and all this? Uh, that that's shows you there's corporation trying to make money here. What you do, you throw it on the table free and let everybody look at it and let private investigators come in and see what they think as well. Right. You take the DNA and do the analysis, and that's the, the proof right there. What will the DNA yeah. show? Is that just got a monkey? But I'll tell you from the what I saw, it's got three fingers. And uh, from what I saw, I they see. have at least, you know, they have four because they have an opposing finger. And that uh, mommy didn't have an opposing finger. So how do they lift things, you know? Although they're exactly. very long. Maybe they throw it around enough. I'm trying to think of how that works uh, mechanically. The extremely long I've seen fingers. Beans but I've three, had. I've, I've seen beans yeah, with ahead. three fingers, but I haven't seen them. I haven't seen them like that like that money mummy looks like you know and uh, right. yeah so that that's that's my my discrepancy in there there's some things in there that i look at and go hmm that's not quite like what i've seen and that's all i have to go by right although there could be other species it's not that we've seen every species that exists everywhere so oh yeah uh what you have a question honey Come well i want to know if uh, plan b already oh What's plan b the utopia yes. <laughs> yeah. plan b Timeline B. Okay. Well, timeline B is where everybody finally gets their uh, act together and they get rid of the political systems that are in place right now. And they go to it, and I know people are going to freak out when I say this. It's more of a global council where people working together, you know, for food production, for getting off of this world, because we all know that planets, uh, you know, change over periods of time. And part of that is what we're going through now. Part of it has been created, actually. But the fact of the matter is uh, we're going through a time period right now where we could grow. And I, this is what I've seen. I've seen plenty of food. I've seen less people. Now, this is the interesting thing. Either scenario, there was less people. It would seem like we just uh, found that balance point. 
and uh, we knew what to do. There was no government saying you couldn't have kids or anything like this, but people just knew we can have kids now, or we can't have kids now, or whatever. They, this this was something that was within the the individuals, and uh, which we're starting to see that actually within our societies now, people making mm-hmm. particular choices not to have children. You know, they see what's yeah. going on with the planet. I also see, uh, you know, along with this situation, a totally new mindset uh, about religion and, and things of this nature. It's, you know, there, there's a lot of good things in all books out there, shall we say, religious materials. But the dogmatic control aspect of it, we, we've lost. It, it went away. It, it totally gone. And it was a spiritual aspect instead of religious aspect that uh, humanity was growing off of. Uh, there was no such thing really as, uh, I, I'm in a Californian, you're a Texan, you know, any of this type of stuff anymore. It was, uh, well, we came from this area or this area. And another thing, uh, you know, when I was in the program, everything was called, you know, within the core, within the programs. You know, um, so that's that's another aspect there that uh, happens in the future. It's one simple thing. You know, everybody's working together. Uh, the whole thing about the ETs and and everything is laid on the table. Everybody knows about them. Everybody's working together. We're working together with some of these uh, species that are out there in a very positive way. And uh, those other ones, the other ETs and things that are out there that were negative and everything, we kind of have a coalition uh, going against them during this, these future times. Uh, but I do see a, a, a galactic thing where people are getting together and they're working together, and they're helping one another, and they they care for one another. Uh, but there's a bigger plan, a galactic plan here that people really have to understand. We got to get out of the just the me, the I, the uh, I'm better than so on. So we have to look at a more a balanced equality to our existence, and that's what I see in the future. And uh, you, nothing is a utopia, shall we say? I, I like what you said about the utopian society. It was too boring, you know. And, right. and it is, it is, you know, we have to have challenges as, as human beings and everything. And part of the big thing is us colonizing other worlds and getting off this world so we can start re-terraforming and helping this planet get back together as we're already doing on Mars, actually. And and that's a, that's a timeline that I clearly saw. And I was introduced to that also once again. Uh, I was four in 1958, and in 1966, Star Trek came out. And apparently, the the information is coming out that that, that, con- that um, Roddenberry was really in the know, and plus he had people that were contacting yeah. experiencers that were getting the concept of the Federation and what was going on there. So even if you look at the what is it, 60 years of Star of Star Trek history now. Um, they went through a point where they were just uh, peacefully colonizing the planet. So they had a one world government. Everybody's peaceful. They went, like John Lennon said, imagine there's no countries, no religions. They went to a higher level of, of uh, you know, uh, beyond dogma. Uh, but even once they got out into space, they had to induce, uh, introduce conflict. So they had like the, um, the Klingons and all these different races, but even over time, if you've just watched this, this is a wonderful example for us of where we can go. They made friends with the Klingons and they brought them into the Federation and uh, said yep. that their enemy kept getting bigger, bigger, and eventually it was the Borg and we're going to all assimilate it. So, um, and that's, um, you know, that's what we can do. We can do a Star Trek, and although they yeah. do have a military construct, but we can do something that's very peaceful, and so we need to imagine it, wrap our heads around it, and we actually, if we do this, can go down that positive timeline that you and Andy and, and, I, and I have seen, and we are the choosers. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that's kind of my my preacher thing. That's what I see. And um, go ahead, Sash or, or, or William, you want to say something regarding that? Uh, <laughs> I you know for for me this is the best of times and the worst of times uh, by yeah. Dickens and I, I I am so utterly blissed out at being able to talk to everybody in the world over the, this radio station and to get your uh, wisdom William and, and to uh, be here with my wife and my cats and beautiful Maui and I know people are and yeah, I know people are suffering, but God, thank you, great spirit, for my life. I'm happy right now. <laughs> yeah, I see this Thanks, right buddy. now. It's, it's a, one of the best times to ever be alive. Uh, you know, I, I see so many things happening, so much growth happening, falling away of the old, 
and the beginning of the new. And that's exactly what I see. Yeah. Right. So we, we may have a closed system that they, they, you know, they're saying, what is it? What do they call that? The uh, enclosed system, but we do have the perturbation. So whenever a closed system gets too perverse, uh, lo and behold, uh, the outside perturbation comes in, which could possibly be uh, externally outside with extraterrestrials, a good ex extraterrestrials coming in and finally making their presence known, or it could be maybe a combination of internally we meditate and we get to a spiritual uh, point where we as humanity break out of our own cosmic egg and, and are born anew. Yeah, and also there could be yeah. asteroids hit just like, uh, you know, caused the sinking of the Minoan fleet and, and great astronomical events that drastically alter everything, too, that our pro scientists probably even know about right now. And you probably even know about, William. Mm -hmm. William, yeah, back to you. We have, have two minutes break. Yeah, we have some things coming and, uh, and some things I don't talk about because it's better to work on what we can do and could instead of what we can't do. You know, like I said, we yeah. got uh, you know a lot of things that we you know some things we can't do. Nothing we can do. We can't change what's happening with our environment right now and everything real fast and all this. So we have to look at what we can do. And yeah. uh, with me, that's that's where I'm at. Is what we can do, and we need to start looking at that, opening our minds, and taking that technology, that fine blend of both fashion ways and modern te technologies, and instituting it into our systems right now that are going to be beneficial and, and more positive in nature. Get out of where we're at right now. We have to. We don't have long. Excellent. Okay, we're up on our second break. You're listening to Divine Paradigm on KCOR. We'll be back in about three minutes. You are in the Divine Paradigm with Dr. Sasha Lesson and Janet Kira Lesson exclusively on the KCOR Digital Radio Network. Some call it the high human civilization. Share your thoughts by calling the KCOR Digital Radio Network hotline number at 702-425-9230. That's 702-425-9230. Worldwide colors use Skype name KCOR Radio. More positive potential revealed in the exploration of the paranormal after this. Deceptions, a suspenseful sci-fi romance thriller by Tina Marie, featuring the tantalizing Erica Jones and the mysterious Russell Hamilton. An out-of-this-world book of fiction, based on years of document facts and files the government does not want you to know about, at least not yet. Alien Deceptions by Tina Marie. Available now at Amazon.com or get a signed copy at TinaMarieEntertainment.com. Get your copy now. Hello? I can't, I can't, I can't hear you, but you can hear me, right? No. Hang on, I want to make sure I understand so a non-citizen can go over to a hospital and walk in and get emergency treatment. That never happens here. What happens? Jobs are created. Guess what happens? The economy grows. Then you have more people paying taxes. Do they not understand? I don't want to hear any more about Islam. I don't want to hear one more word about Islam. Take your religion and shove it up your behind. I'm sick of you. Fatigued by the identical mind-numbing viewpoints up and down the dial? You fat pig who lies on his back all day, demanding that everybody else subsidize them. What do you do, jerk? All right. Well, listen to the master of provocative insight, Dwight Lilly, exclusively on the KCOR Digital Radio Network, Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. Whether it's local or national news, Dwight has his finger on the pulse of the nation. So now you've got a case where Biden Bundy, in an interview first broke in the New York Times, it is his comments are beyond repugnant to me. They are beyond despicable to me. They are beyond ignorant to me. The Dwight Lilly Show, never restrained and always opinioned. Talk without the fluff. The world is about to change forever. Get your weekly dose of truth every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Pacific and 10 p.m. Eastern, only on the KCOR Digital Radio Network. I'm jumping in with my clothes on. Most party fouls are pretty dumb, but if you decide to drink and drive underage, you could lose your license and your freedom. 
Learn more at ultimatepartyfoul.org. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Looking for a radio show like no other? We need something uh, brand new. Then tune in to the KCOR Digital Radio Network. Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. And get ready for the quantum shift. The world is evolving around us. Will you be ready for the shift? This is one of the most important decisions you'll ever make. The Quantum Shift. Hosted by Dr. Sam Muggsy, will enlighten your understanding of the world and bring you mentally into a better understanding of existence. The Quantum Shift. Quantum Shift. Quantum Shift. Quantum Shift. Live Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. Exclusively on the KCOR Digital Radio Network. It's time, once again, to unravel the mysteries of the universe by connecting the dots of the higher consciousness. You get to really sort of enjoy a bizarre ride. Become part of the show by calling the KCOR Digital Radio Network hotline number at 702-425-9230. That's 702-425-9230. Worldwide colors use Skype name KCOR Radio. Tweet your thoughts anytime by using hashtag KCOR. It's my favorite thing to do every day. Escape the Matrix and join the conversation live in our chat room at www.kcorradio.com. Now, back to Divine Paradigm with your enlightened hosts. Dr. Sasha Lesson and Janet Kira Lesson. And we are back, Janet, Sasha, and William White Crow. Sasha, what do you want to say? Okay, well, we were looking at uh, last time, we had alluded to there may be very catastrophic events that are beyond uh, what individuals can control. And I'm reminded in my studies of the ancient Anunnaki. When the uh, Anunnaki uh, had uh, bombed Canaan and Sinai and a radioactive cloud spread uh, north uh, and uh, toward Sumer and uh, everybody was dying and the Anunnaki got in their rocket ships and, uh, and uh, submarines and got away. But Bao, the uh, princess, the daughter of the king of Nibiru, who is married to uh, uh, the Nerja, the great uh, warrior, she stayed and she died with the people of her uh, city, Lagash, uh, ministering to them. And so that what it, what it reminds me of is even if things terrible may be in the offing, it's like, uh, I guess, uh, Hoffman said, uh, you know, uh, today is a good day to die. Today is a good day to live. And uh, if you have that in your heart, then you can dig whatever it is and do the best you can with the path that you've got to walk right now. Very true. Yes. Very true. I really like what you said there. So, William, um, I guess this last part, we'd like to focus on a couple things. We have a question, and our listener, uh, Cheryl Francis, wants to know, well, does Dr. Lesson, but does any of us see a mass landing happening within two years or an event? Um, when you were working for the military or the powers that be or with your downloads or shamanic experiences, have you seen anything like this, uh, the event that people were talking about? No, I don't see anything like that in, in within this next two years. I do see it okay. later on into the future, but I do not see that in this, within the next two years. Yeah. Okay, I, I've, from, uh, I, I'm reminded in 1947 it was a massive flyover, uh, Washington, D.C., that um, uh, Michael Sala has really d- documented with official documents. And this really did s- set uh, the whole government uh, truth embargo uh, in, in, in high gear. And so that, that, that co- those kind of things have happened. And from my perspective is we are right now we still have a great fluidity here in in uh, Los Estados Unidos. But, but however, uh, you know. It takes just one either false flag uh, like the Twin Towers or one natural disaster 
for there to be emergency states of different degrees of severity all the way up to martial law while we still have uh, a certain kind of uh, administration run by the uh, deep state uh, murderous mafiosa. So that right now is a window. There's still time. Okay? <laughs> There's still time. And, there and is. I'll just... Yeah. Uh, I saw a download, I did not get a time frame, where they uh, simultaneously appear, major ships over every city, major and small, and so it's a mass sighting that the whole world sees at the same time, so there's absolutely no doubt. And then that uh, scenario kind of played out uh, later that year with that, what was that movie called, where they had the 12 ships parked? Um, uh, it was a very lovely movie, the end of... It was later on that same year, whatever year that was, uh, The Arrival, The Arrival, the arrival. So, the arrival, yeah. Okay, so thank you. I hope that answered your question. <laughs> it, was, it was clear as mud, but it covered the ground. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so uh, William, we don't have a lot of time. and um, We want to cover a little bit, and we will definitely have you back as many times as we need to cover this story because it's incredible. Yeah. And so about your, uh, your uh, what do you call it, your, when you were stationed on other planets, when you visit other planets like Mars and the moon, tell us about that. Uh, what was that about? What did you see? Sure. How, what were the circumstances that got you there? Well, I'll be honest with everybody right off the top, and I've said this on other shows too, Mars is home. And I, 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 I just feel such a pull to that world. It is unbelievable. I've, I, I've been there. I know what it, you know, even before I've been there. Uh, I guess that's the best way to put it, you know, because uh, we have genetic memory. But uh, basically yeah. on Mars, when I got there first in the programs and everything, you, you go there, they take you to the planet, you get to step outside, you get to experience the environment, you get to experience some of the life forms in classrooms, they exp explain everything to you before you leave here. And uh, when we first went there, we went in a ship, it wasn't a jump room, you know, because we didn't have the full technology at that time. They had it, but it wasn't working the way it needed to. We lost, you know, some, several people. But the main thing on Mars, people have to understand there's flowing water there. There's rivers there. There's lakes there. There's forests there. And uh, some of the presentation, uh, my presentation started, to, it was supposed to start at one time, but it ended up starting because whatever difficulties they had, uh, you know, at the Mars conference, 45 minutes late. So I didn't even get a chance to do my whole presentation. But the pictures in there, I tried to give everybody an idea of what was going on. I showed the lakes. I showed the trees around the lakes. I showed other life forms there, the snake type creatures that Andrew and I have talked about. You know, uh, I showed tracks of, uh, of creatures and, and, and equipment. Also, you've seen uh, some of the tracks where you've seen one track and another track kind of come off of it and go off. That's what we call the bulldog. And that's a, a craft that carries uh, six individuals in it and it's wheeled. And it, uh, we're kind of, it's, it's a wheel, but it, there's spaces in between the deals. So it, when it walks, I'd have to draw a picture and put it on my website one day for everybody to understand. And uh, you take off, you do cool. your explorations this way and that way. You know? So we, we got a complete system up there. We definitely, the base that I was on up there is circular. It goes down three different levels. Uh, the, all, all the power requirements that we ever wanted and everything were, were taken care of. The anti-grab aspects of planning... Yeah, traveling within the system, underground facilities. We went into the side of a mountain, and one craft, it's just like a big square in the side of a, of a cliff, and you go right in there. And as you go in, it can split and go two different ways. Uh, so you have the smaller craft go to the right and the larger craft, which go to the left. And I also put that up on the, the Mars presentation, too. That is there as well. Uh, we used to be on the surface in the beginning, a lot of People want to talk about Mars, you know, well, how can we stop going to the moon and everything? Oh, well, that's very simple. Number one, we were told we weren't ready to be dealing with what was there. And we also turned around and took our sights and put them on Mars. So all the time that people weren't thinking we weren't going to the moon, moon and why we weren't going to the moon, we were going somewhere else. We were going to Mars because we already had the technology the know how and the understanding to do it. And uh, mm -hmm. so that's that's where we were. As they do have, when I was there, I didn't see millions of people like a lot of people talk about and things of this nature. All the individuals that I dealt with and within the programs and everything, I knew it was about 1,200 individuals, you know, that I knew for a fact that were out there. Uh, you know, the two other stations, uh, also they were taking readings of Europa because we know that there's life there as well. There, we've also seen tracks there. Uh, I mean, there's just so much that is going on there. Uh, the life forms, most of the life forms on Mars uh, live under the sand and in the 
crevices and things. And there's some tentacled uh, creatures out there too that can reach out from these uh, crevices and grab things and pull them in. Uh, the atmosphere, I don't believe a darn thing you you hear when the scientists say, well, it's you know the red planet. Blah, blah, blah. But we landed there. The sky was a baby blue. It was just a beautiful place. You know, it looked like, shall we say, one of our uh, areas on the planet here where it's not quite desert, but not quite mountain either. You know what I mean? With the rocks yeah, and everything yeah. of this nature. And, and uh, so dope. it was there. Yeah, I, I, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, all, all this was there. You know, you could see it. You know, they had uh, some creatures that were not too good to us, you know. And Andrew had talked about that, the pterodactyl-type bird creature, which is not there anymore. Uh, that had a priority to take that thing out because it's just too dangerous. Uh, you know, because it is a different type of rule there. You know, it isn't. And a lot of people ask me, well, you know, why didn't you take pictures in that? Come on. If you're in these programs, you're caught with a camera or any type of intelligence on you, you're gone. It is that simple, right. you know. Oh, wait, nobody's going to let you. Go ahead. Did you eradicate those birds, those day, those, those swooping uh, uh, we, menace birds? The the teams that were up there after I was gone, I heard that that's uh, they're gone. They're they're no more. If there are, they're on some other areas of the planet. But we got to think also that we've only looked at ten percent of Mars as far as society is looking at right now. You know, uh, uh, yeah. there are still a, another 90 percent of the planet that nobody has ever seen. I mean, we've seen it. That's how we know that, you know, certain areas, there's more of a gravitational field. There's more of a magnetic field in some areas than, than there is others uh, around the central part of the planet. When you get down in deep pockets, you have more oxygen, you know, than you would have in other areas because oxygen is a heavier gas compared to the other ones there. You can breathe oh. uh, partially for a period of time. You know, so this is something that people don't, they, if they haven't been there, they haven't been in the programs, they don't understand how all these factors work together, oh. you know. So, uh, so they didn't work. Go ahead. The United States government, are these facilities, this, is this program the United States program? There could be other programs by other humans, uh, or are there any uh, ancient facilities or, or other species from previous uh, oh, yeah. races or settlements? Yeah, there's other species that are on uh, there, too. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, you know, we do know for a fact that the Greys are there and the Nordics are there, too. As a matter of fact, we caught some of their craft coming down uh, with the rover photographs, so, you know, coming down onto the Earth. And, I mean, not to the Earth, but to Mars. And the way they do it on Mars is when these other beings are coming in and everything, they'll shine a bright light up from the surface where they're at. It's like, you know, we use GPS, they do the same thing. But uh, this indicates these are like a green light, red light kind of thing. I'm not saying they have green lights, but if we have an airport and we're going to land, we'll have certain indicators on that flight line that will let you know if it, you know, it's a takeoff point or a landing point or whatever. The same thing is there. It's just different. They don't have to have a landing landing gear to you know land on a long runway and everything because they have the capacity. And because of the gravitational field of that planet as well, that they can land very easily, go straight down into the holes, into the ground, where these bases are, things of that nature, too. Uh, we do have, we are working together with beings up there, you know, uh, three of these in particular beings that I had mentioned before on, on Mars and out in space as well. And that's how come sometimes you'll see the space shuttle and everything going around Earth and you'll, you'll see two orbs craft that come up to it and watch them. You know, they're not there just to turn around and look at us. We're communicating with them as well, you know. Uh, so that's a very important thing that people need to understand. We are already working with some of these, but the fact of the matter is uh, this civilization, and that's the only way that I could describe it, uh, this breakaway civilization lives there among us and lives among our, system, our star system too, you know. Uh, they have all the toys that we would like to have and, and all the agendas that we would like to have, the uh, going out there and terraforming. That's why we're on Mars right now. We're terraforming it. And we're terraforming it big time. And uh, that's how come all of a sudden, in the, what, in the last 10 years, 11 years or so, that all of a sudden there's a higher methane increase on the planet. Oh, interesting. Not, oh, now we found gravitational waves. They have to let this information out. Uh, part sure, of it is sure. because of the rover pictures, because of the rover pictures, also because of the orbiter pictures, and because too much information is getting out by who? The public on what's really going on out there. So notice when Andrew, uh, he was out there, and then when I came out, Andrew found me up on my compound up here. And finally, after a year, talked me into, you know, coming out and talking about this on the, on the radio and everything, uh, stuff of this nature, that, you know, 
they have a really good thing going out there right now. And all of a sudden, they started putting, oh, we need teachers, we need psychologists, we need workers for Mars. And uh, think about that the last two years. And all of a sudden, they needed all these people for these Mars programs. And military people, generals were talk talking about it. And now all of a sudden, boom, they're calming down again, you know. And they're coming down about the same time that you've got a bunch of people out there that are trying to talk crap or say that other people's memories and things weren't right. So you kind of kind of look at these two things that are going on right here. Maybe they're working together. But the fact of the matter is um, we are working with other beings out there. There is a breakaway civilization. The things that I've seen on Mars and, and uh, that we have bases on, and come on, let's, let's face it, our astronauts even know that we have uh, structures on the moon itself where people are in there one of our astronauts when they went over and they seemed seven like four or five of these dome structures inside of a a crater perfect dome structures they said boy uh, those people don't get out there you know and uh, that it came out at the mars presentation too from the individual that was there you know so we have to look and realize that this isn't just a country thing this is a completely different society that is thriving off all the other political leaders and the scientists and things. A lot of the people that, uh, you know, microbiologists and all this, they say that are killed off and everything, well, they're just simply transferred <laughs> off planet or into the programs. And you never see them again. They're given new identities. Uh, they live off world. They're part of a situation that is going to be benef very beneficial to them and their families in the future. You know, that's how come those of us that have been in the program know that our genetics are going to continue on. Because they had to have our genetics for us to be in the program anyway. Uh, they uh -huh. knew about me before I went into any military programs. They sat down with me. The military did. Sergeant Simpson, which found out was a colonel uh, later on, uh, turned around and they knew. They asked me every question about my youth and my interaction with, with these other beings. Uh, and they knew about it because I answered them and told them the truth and everything. And they smiled. And they said, well, welcome to the club. You know, mm, so they wow. knew. They knew everything already about me. That's why they wanted me in the programs. And I think it's the same thing with a lot of people. Oh, I know that. I, I was on a military base in Johnson Atoll. And the moment they I landed, they were all over me. <laughs> so um, they knew that I was part of the program, even though they, they didn't reveal it to my conscious mind. And I always suspected. I was going, what is all this attention about? Why are they, you know, talking to me every day for an hour to two hours? I'm supposed to be working, doing data entry. Yeah. So I never did what I was supposed to do. I was in some kind of program, but they weren't revealing it to me consciously. But you're one of the people that yeah. they revealed to to, it to you consciously because you were going to, you know, the, the Mars base. Now, your story resonates with what uh, we heard from John Titor II, and he said that um, he was on all, you know, Mars, Moon, and beyond his, uh, that the, that our government, world government has, or, or the United States part, or whoever this is, has a treaty with the four major species, the greys, reptilians, mantis, and uh, humanoids, tall humanoids. So that correlates as, as well. Um, we're going to be going running out of time here. Uh, what do you want to ask? Well, there's just one, one, one little, little question. I, uh, Lewis Reinhardt has this hypothesis that some of the rock sculpture that you find in different areas uh, indicate different kinds of uh, townships or, er, or, or settlement areas. And, uh, uh, and I, uh, when, uh, yeah, I wondered what your reaction was. <laughs> yeah, basically, <laughs> it was it's, it's just like here. If we turn around and go to uh, Africa, Africa or Egypt or anywhere, they're going to have symbols and representations of their cultures and things like that. And that's a big thing what we did and the scientists did on Mars. Uh, the ones that I was watching over reconnoiter areas and they'd come out and we'd go out and they would gather all this information from these ancient civilizations, ancient technologies from crash ships that were already there. And there's a lot more to it. Like you said, we just don't have the time uh, that we can go really into depth and, and get everything going. But you're right. Yeah, there, there are certain areas up there where the architecture and things of the past civilization was different. And uh, that's probably a lot where the conflict and everything came in that, uh, that happened up there. And one of the time jumps that I was involved in into a past time period, Mars. And it showed when the atmosphere was deteriorating and they were collecting samples and DNA. and all. I mean, there was just a, a ton of stuff that they were doing. But yeah, you're right. You're right. Who was the day uh, that was doing that? Was it, uh, and Sasha's a quick question, but we're almost out of time. Who was the day that was, that when you went to the past, who, was it the Anunnaki? Because we have an Anunnaki story that we uh, have researched and uh, fleshed out in our research. I didn't understand your, but what do you, 
I didn't understand your, the, your the question. You said you went to the past and you saw that there was a lot of uh, 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 oh, yeah. disruptions okay. going on. They were scrambling to preserve DNA and stuff. Who was the Zay that yeah. you, were, you were viewing or interacting with? Uh, this was uh, several species at the same same time, but it was mainly us and our scientists when they made the jumps back to grab as much mm -hmm. DNA and technology as they can to bring it back to the present time so they would ha have a history, uh, you know, oh, okay. a genetic history of Mars's past. And has, has there been an analysis of the genetics and have they determined who those people were that were on Mars in the past? Yeah, they were definitely uh, dealing with the Anunnaki at that time and one other race, and I uh, don't have that name. I'll look at, I'm one of the few people that made a lot of notes back then and put them uh -huh. in boxes. And uh, so I've been pulling those notes out and uh, rereading them and everything. And, uh, you know, and it brings back a lot of your memories, you know, because that's, that's a long time ago, you know. But the fact of the matter is uh, there's two particular species during that time. There was a war, there was a physical conflict going on, battles happening they wanted it had to do with part of the war in heaven thing part of them wanted to come to earth and take over the earth because of what was happening there and there was a massive conflict so well, part of that space fleet that had left mars because of the impacts that were coming wanted to come here basically and take over and the other part said no so that's where the great war in heaven come from basically now that you see in the bible and everything it's uh, they wanted us to continue on as we were they could live here but they could not take over the planet and interfere with the species that were here at the time so that's some of the other information that I had uh, learned as well. Okay, Sash, do you have a final well, question? Uh, just uh, what you're saying totally confirms the uh, account that uh, Stuart Swerdlow, who was a, uh, one of the heads of the, of the Montauk uh, um, project in the first part of the time, and basically said that when the uh, Dracos uh, sent a hollow planetoid uh, through that uh, destroyed Melduck and made the Cooper belt and yeah. then uh, sucked they surf a lot of the surface from uh, Mars uh, 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 water, and, and uh, but the Maldecans had taken shelter underneath with the Martians, and the the Martians right. who'd also gone underneath and and gotten some kind of protective material from the coast. But in any case, they were all Lyran refugees running from the Dracos, and, and then the, mm -hmm. as uh, the, this planetoid went past Earth, it sucked up most of the water. It was uh, and water vapors in and Lemuria and. Uh, uh, Atlantis arose, but in any case, the, some of the Martians ultimately, uh, uh, the Maldecans, came to settle in the Gobi Desert, and yes. uh, and, to, and other other groups that were brought to try to control the uh, Dracos, who were going, trying to make a comeback. They'd all uh, retreated, left Venus, which is what this uh, body became, uh, and uh, they set the moon in place as, as uh, to invade Earth, but ultimately they lost to the combined forces of the, um, the Galactic Federation. Anyway, so anyway, my, my data yeah. seems to be exactly like yours. Right. Well, mm -hmm. yeah. That's interesting we haven't met. I'd like to say one thing, though, real quick here. I've seen a question in chat about the gravity on Earth, and I mean about uh -huh. Mars. Let me put it this way. If you take a football and throw it on Mars compared to here, you're going to be able to throw that football about six times uh, further than you can here. So there's your answer. Awesome. Interesting. Okay, we have two minutes to close. Um, your final words. Go ahead, William. I think think that if everybody turns around and does a study and everything, don't listen to the dogma, don't listen to the nothing, no, this is all false and that's false. Use your intuition, do your research, you're going to find out that there's a lot more going on out there with Mars, with space, with the breakaway civilization, with Mars. We need to bring ourselves up to a point in humanity now to become that class one civilization. Uh, that is our goal and they want us to help us do that. But we have to make that decision as human beings on this planet ourselves. Uh, we can have it, and we can, can have a great future, but we have to start doing things about it right now to make it that way. And your website and your book. William, my WilliamWhiteCrow.com is my website. My book is Are You Tired of Living a Toxic Life? And I had to write that because I just seen too many people out there depressed on what was going on what in their lives and the world around them. And this is a workbook that a person can put in their pocket and highlight and use every single day of their, their life or get to help other people. Uh, you don't uh, other people about this book to give other people and it's really helped them out also i'm on facebook i'm on twitter and i'm on linkedin too so you can get uh, me any of those places also i have a youtube channel and i have my radio show too that's on truthfrequencyradio.com out there and i'm on every sunday from 4 to 5 p.m 
on truthfrequency.com. And then after that, my shows are posted on uh, YouTube, so you can see them there too. So you can get a hold of me anytime at williamwhitecrow.com at yahoo.com too. Well, thank you so much, William. We, we we had a wonderful time. We will have you back again. Uh, much love and blessings and aloha to our listeners. You're listening to The Divine Divine Paradigm, Paradigm on KCOR. Aloha. In three, two, one. Until next week, we must leave the world of the Divine Paradigm. But always remember, you all exist on more than one plane or dimension. And there is a shift coming. A shift to universal consciousness. A shift to the divine paradigm. Divine paradigm. Divine paradigm. For more information on the divine paradigm as well as the hosts, Dr. Sasha Lesson and Janet Kira Lesson, please visit their website at Aquarian Radio. Divine Paradigm, live every Tuesday afternoon, 2.30 p.m. Pacific, exclusively on the KCOR Digital Radio Network. Your transformational future is at hand. This is KCOR Las Vegas, home of the Digital Radio Network, broadcasting from a shack just south of Area 51. Wait, that doesn't exist. This is the KCOR Digital Radio Network. Now for the news.